We did it again. We made it through another float conference. Float conference 2023 is in the bag from Kentucky. It was an incredible experience for me personally, and I'm really excited to meet up with Kim and Gloria and talk about their experiences as well. As well. Uh, Kim in particular has quite an inside view of everything that went on, including um, putting it on <laughs> with Jocelyn the, as the president of the float conference. So, uh, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm still recovering, still recharging from the float conference, and I can only imagine Kim is as well, but uh, today we're going to celebrate the excitement and the good times from it. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Float Home. If you aren't already a Float Home user, I highly recommend going to helmbot.com and seeing how Helmbot can be used for your float center, either your new float center or your existing one, whether you're using float tanks, sauna, uh, any kind of spa stuff that would go with your float center, yoga, classes, uh, all that works now with Helm. It's really incredible, incredible, incredibly robust, and it does everything you need specifically for your float center as well, which means keeping track of your chemicals that you have, uh, every part of sanitation for it, water levels, temperature, everything that your employees can log in every single day. They can also, when I say they, I mean your employees can track everything going on uh, with each other as well, have an ongoing conversation, have specific conversations going on, different project groups. It's really incredible as, of course, also just scheduling your clients, all of that. It's really all under one roof with Helmbot. It's <laughs> quite impressive. Um, and also, uh, just as a heads up for any existing users, just know that uh, it'll be coming from a new phone number now. Whenever Helm texts somebody, uh, it'll be coming from 888-350-2430. <laughs> Write that down. Uh, you'll just log into Helm and it'll show you there in the what's new uh, section of Helm. And uh, just know that uh, that's what you'll be needing to save into your phone from now on for any communications, whether you're texting Helm or Helm is texting your clients. That'll be the new phone number going forward. Also want to give a shout out to the FTA. The Float Tank Association is uh, making sure you don't have to start from scratch. If you're expanding your float center, adding a new float tank, uh, need a consultant, the FTA keeps track of all of the stuff. They have trusted resources that they can send you to and make sure that you don't just have to, like I said, start from scratch and just from the very beginning start figuring out, okay, who are the float tank manufacturers right now? What's going on? Who, who's doing consulting? It's all part of the Float Tank Association's project of making sure all that is tracked and kept up to date so that when you are ready to take the next step for your business or you're just starting out your business, you already have all those resources at your fingertips. One more awesome reason to be part of the FTA, something that I truly believe in, the Float Tank Association is incredibly important for us today and it's gonna be incredibly important for us in the future. So please become a member. I mean, by all means, go to flotation.org and check it out, but uh, I implore you to become a member. I am truly believe in it and um, yeah, the FTA does so much for us and we need to put our little bit of energy back into it as well. All right, let's go ahead and start the show. Welcome back to another episode of Art of the Flow, where flow centers thrive. My name is Dylan. I'm a flow shop in Portland, Oregon for the past 12 years with my lovely wife, Sandra. Hey everybody, it's Kim Hannon. I co-own Sukino Float Center in Salt Cave in Southern Indiana with um, Hubby Graham, the other Graham. And hello everyone, Gloria here, Gloria Morris with Float 60, a couple locations, four to be exact, in Illinois and Indiana. And today we are talking about the Float Conference 2023 in Kentucky. Oh my goodness, what a different Kentucky. Float Conference. Did this? Did the vibe yeah. feel differently? Di- different for you guys? <laughs> Kim, it probably felt very different for you. <laughs> since it was in our hometown. Oh my gosh! Uh, did it feel yeah. like you went home, Kim, or that you were home? Well, there were so many layers to this one, where like my friends were there, my family was there. Like, I mean, so while I don't live in Louisville, I live across the river in uh, Jeffersonville. And my, my float shop is in uh, New Albany. It Everything just felt familiar. But I think what really felt, it, it was just so much of 
my life was poured into it. You know, my acupuncturist was there. One of my massage mm-hmm. therapists was there. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, it was really all my people, my husband's band, like everybody was there. Yeah. And so it, it was like this, like, whoa, my world's just all melted together kind of wow. thing. Wow. Yeah. Trip out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a good. And so, I mean, it, a... it definitely had a different vibe <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for me. <laughs> so, yeah, th- this, is, this is good. This is important to cover, which is this is probably the most float conference involvement this the the art of the float crew has had so like our this episode is very different than just visiting the conference and talking about it um kim was the host of or one of the hosts along with chelsea and gosh darn it uh what's the other greg great thank you yes, yes. um of waitlist and um and also is the president of <laughs> of the float conference board so um kim had a lot on her shoulders um and, not only and being a Sponsor, a speaker. I did a Parents. pre-conference workshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have to was... tell. I have to call out. Call, call Never out. once did I look at you and think, "Oh, she's frazzled." It was just like, "Oh, just rolling in here, rolling that was in there." Insane. It. I mean, it, seriously, seriously, it was an orchestration of absolute perfection from that standpoint. Right. Yep. So, congratulations. First and foremost, let's congratulate him on the success of <laughs> Yes. And and that is only possible because yes. of Jocelyn and all of yes. her work and Alicia as well. Like they are rock stars yes. on site. And you know, Jocelyn Absolutely. and I do a lot leading up to it. And Jocelyn does so much in the weeks prior that I swear mm-hmm. I don't think the woman sleeps. Um but this year really did feel just different. Um, th- of course, there's always hiccups, but hopefully people don't see those, you it know, was, and, and yeah. You know, you're you're my friend. So we, we were hanging out a little bit and I would hear just a little bit of like what went wrong behind the scenes. And you'd be like, damn it, or yeah, I'm pissed about that. And then <laughs> 10 seconds later, I would have no idea. You know, if I hadn't been there in that exact moment, I I'd honestly like I'll, I'll take a little of whatever you're taking, Kim, because I would like that. <laughs> I'll have some too. Right? Yeah. Okay. You know. Um, and you guys, I think we should also just note that uh, Drew is not here and ha- yeah. was not at the conference and has sold his float center. It is official. Uh, New Hampshire Float has new, or NH, NH Float, has new uh, owners. And I think even Congratulations, Drew. Yeah. Congrats, Drew. And congrats, congrats, congrats to the new to owners, Drew. too. Um, yeah. They've yeah. introduced themselves on social media. If you guys want, go ahead and check that out. It's really cool. They seem totally into it. I'm, I'm stoked for them. And of course, yeah, stoked for, for Drew and Drew's next projects, which he's not sharing everything just yet. So we'll have to wait and see. So, you know, follow him on, on the Instagram and everything so you can see what his next project is. If you're into that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And so that is also a little bit why uh, we have a little bit more of the inside line on the float conference here, why th- this crew isn't uh, just, just visiting. Um, Although, I mean, for the most part, I, I was just visiting, <laughs> so I can I can share my impressions and everything. Um, although I will say I hosted um, some, um, what do you call them, not roundtable discussions, panels. The panel discussions. The panels, and, and, yeah. um, and that was so cool. Like, I feel like the conference is evolving, and, um, you know, I think a lot of people show up for informational stuff, like um, other modalities is a really mm-hmm. big topic right now. We've seen so much diversity in... Uh, what float centers are offering and so or, or what they should offer and you know some of that's profitability other is just interest um, in what float centers want to do and being more robust and not just floating and it's been interesting to see that evolve and it's been great seeing the conference um, recognize that and bring information for that so that my small part in that was simply um, you know hosting those people so that they could share a ton of really awesome information that was really cool and yeah, I think there, that was a huge oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gloria. I, I was just going to second that and say, you know, it really felt this year that the interaction it was is like very collaborative. The interaction was really high. It felt like the people's conference almost. Like everybody was part of kind of bringing a portion of it to life mm-hmm. versus just talks, right? And we've had mm-hmm. workshops in the past, mm-hmm. but I don't know this year with the panels, it felt like it took on a life of its own, really. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just cool. such a mission accomplished, right? Where you can actually see these things taking their own identity and, um, you know, facilitating the workshops were, that was a really cool highlight for me as well. 
Well, especially with right. you, you know, Dylan. We we had to make a really hard decision. It was, you know, because it's the float conference and we're the float industry. Huh. And, you know, we've had a lot of discussions with the board and with Graham and Ashcon as founders of, you know, what is our intention and, you know, what is our mission as an organization and what we're putting on every year. And as much as we wanted to really stick to the float and keep everything about floating, it's so hard to do so now. And I think we would be doing yeah. a disservice uh, to our industry if we only stuck to the float. Yeah. And so we've really been intentional about trying to find partners that feel like they have the same kind of integrity and the same sort of vibe that uh, we have and to be able to share information about, you know, modalities that pair really well and to recognize that within ourselves that like we aren't the experts on it. We might have some folks who are offering these services in the community already and they know a lot of really great information. And so we really did reach out a lot um, to get individual float center owners and, you know, wellness center owners um, on the panels, as well as looking at our manufacturers and our sponsors who were already going to be there and asking them to share some information. And um, and then we also took that even a step further to beyond the panel discussions of having workshops. And um, one of the things that we've heard so much, and, and, and I'll, I'll talk, or not workshops, roundtables, but one of the things that we always hear is like, everybody loves the conversations and those sidebar yeah. conversations yes. that are happening. Yes, and we wanted to kind of capitalize on that and make it more of a part of the conference. And yeah. so I got to lead and it was really fun to lead the the round tables where we just gathered in the scene, which is kind of like a cafe environment. And each table had a specific uh, subtopic within a major category. So we did one for uh, leading employees, one on marketing and oh my gosh, it's, I, it's been a few days, so I've already slept. Um, and one <laughs> on uh, something else. So it'll come to me in a minute, but we had these specific subtopics and basically what I did is just ask everybody at the table to talk about that topic and take it anywhere they wanted to go. It could be a brainstorm of ideas on things that they do within that category. It could be best practices or things to avoid um, and then put it all on a flip chart. We had uh, flip charts all up on the window and then uh, we would brainstorm for a certain amount of time. And then when that time was over, each table would get up and just share their findings. And then we would also share from the rest of the group other ideas and so it was like this way to rapid fire discuss um, a whole huge number of topics. And people were scrambling to write notes and had, you know, lists upon lists of ideas of things they wanted to try or implement or um, at least people to go talk to later and yeah. get more information. So we really did want to make it feel much more collaborative. You know, yes, and, and, I'll take that. That's very yeah. cool. And those yeah. are not recorded. Those are just like live right. conversations. One more reason to get a ticket next year and be part mm -hmm. of it. Because um, those yeah. those conversations, that inspiration that you get is is the juice that you come home with, at least, at least yeah. for me. And uh, we wanted to record them, but it's so awkward. Like when you're sitting at a table yeah. with people and it they would take not this camera the and you're trying to, exactly. yeah, it just yeah. It wouldn't work. And um, I really do feel like this year, 2023, was the real rebound from the COVID so felt conference, right? Mm -hmm. Because the last couple of years we tried the hybrid and, mm. you know, it's just, I, I just felt like the presence was all in the room, in the, in the uh, venue. Um, so that, that made it different too. And really mm -hmm. refreshing, like, oh my gosh, we're finally back yeah. to being <laughs> and here. Yes. I will say Sandra was at home watching the virtual watching the um, presentations virtually too. So it was, I mean, I, I do agree with you yeah. and I, it was kind of really cool that she was part of it and able to like, yeah, that's comment awesome to me, you know, later in the day about the, about the talks. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping it focused on those main stage talks, you know, that it logistically is so much easier. Um, I, I, again, <laughs> we learned our lesson in 2020, one when we were trying to do it all and having the workshops live and yeah it was just that was the time that you would see me frazzled and stressed uh -huh. and I I do recall at one point in 2021 literally hiding under a table behind the registration desk because I just needed a minute <laughs> because it was so much chaos and wow. this time I did not hide behind a table I didn't hide under a table I didn't hide at all this year you know what was <laughs> hiding under a table though Somebody had cookies under a table, baked uh -huh. goods. I don't know where those came from. I think those were but, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's why they were hiding. It was right. like a secret stash. Graham, uh, Graham was making oh, sure yeah. 
people were rock star gambling gram? is. Yeah. Rock star. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Better than other gram, rock star gram. He'll yeah, like I don't yes. think you can go by <laughs> other gram anymore. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yes. And um, you know, that but, was really fun for me this year, like for my husband to really show up because dude. normally, yeah. you know, it's a role <laughs> reversal because our everyday lives, like he is, he's, he's playing shows. Literally people are asking for autographs. It's such a weird thing for us to, and especially for me, I'm like hiding in the background or I'm the one taking the pictures of him with all of his fans. And, <laughs> and when we go to the float conference, he's usually pretty quiet mm-hmm. and, um, you know, just kind of soaking it all in and, and just there to support me. And this year he actually got to step up and we kept him really, really busy. He honestly missed about half of the conference because he was running errands mm-hmm. and going to pick up things and, um, good, good. you know, people's shipments came in late, all of that kind of stuff. So he mm-hmm. did miss a lot of it, but, but he also got to show up and, and, uh, really kind of be a little bit more visible, uh, obviously on stage and do his thing too. Um, wow. I mean, I guess we're, we're jumping around a little bit, but yeah. Um, Kim's <laughs> husband, uh, and his rock band <laughs> just rocked the house for, for the float conference audience. It was insane. They absolutely brought full energy and just kicked ass. That was so cool. And yeah. um, I love live music. Like if, if somebody like a band is tight and they're on stage, like nothing feeds me more. And uh, his vocals were insane. His vocals mm-hmm. were so impressive. Um, I don't need amazing vocals, like, but hot damn, I was impressed. I was, I was floored <laughs> a couple times. And his sustain, his, his control, I was... Uh, so impressed by that, yeah. And and the whole band rocked, obviously. They, they all rocked. That was so stinking cool. That is not why I go to the float conference, but now <laughs> that, that, it was such a highlight for me. Yeah, I mean, the first time we've ever had a rock concert at the float conference. You yeah, know, James and Amy brought us a roller derby, and that was amazing. <laughs> um, but I can't skate, and... Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, I'm really bummed that I, I I had to leave early, so I left Saturday. But uh, the feedback yeah. from Kara, who's my manager, who oh, attended, yeah. and she just absolutely loved it, and she couldn't stop talking about uh, Graham and the rock band. And <laughs> she's like, "Wow, this cool. this is just." She was floored by the whole thing, the whole experience. So, like rolling it back up to the conference itself. It's always cool when you're able to bring a team member who's never participated in Mm -hmm. in the past and you try to kind of give them a sense of what they could expect, but you really can't, right? You have to meet the people. I think she was just so like taken back at how many people, you know, approached her and just had such an incredible uh, time. But yeah, Graham was a highlight for her. So (laughs) shout out to Graham and I'm so bummed that I missed it. Yes. Uh, Kara yes. was amazing, by the way. Your manager she was. is so Thank cool. You. Yeah, she is awesome. She yeah. is awesome. Yes. Yeah, she definitely, she's ready to come back next year, wherever it's going to be. Um, and it. Kim, your staff is also awesome. I love meeting your yeah. staff. It, God, it was just, yeah, it was cool. We we're visiting your your home. And also we got to see your center. I wanted that to hold be a, a whole different thing, but just being able to see your staff, your center, you know, your family is buzzing around the conference as well. Like, that whole being in your home was so cool and so special. <laughs> that was rad. Um, and how many managers were at this float conference? I feel like the percentage yeah. was so high. Yeah, it was really cool. I don't know exactly, but I think we do need to look at that and you know maybe try to plan for that next year and have mm. you know certain workshops or sessions that are just for managers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my pre-conference workshop for marketing and management, we had um, at least one manager in there who you know, and the owner was also there. Um, And then there were several people that I talked to who were managers. And I think that's really awesome when we can start getting the team in. There were others. um, I mean, there were quite a few. um, And I think we could really create some awesome value for those folks to give them a little time to connect and Mm -hmm. to have a space to network and do what we owners (laughs) do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I (laughs) I think that'd be really cool. Is it fair to say, too, that as a result of that observation, I'm, I'm thinking more so than years past, I'm feeling a lot more float center owners do have staff, right? Like I I feel like in the beginning, Mm -hmm. it was a lot of, yeah, there there Mm -hmm. weren't, I felt like I was always kind of a fish out of water that I had a a team and I didn't work in the float center, but you know, some of the talks like Shawnee, for example, similar where she knows she doesn't work in her float center, but on her float center. Mm -hmm. I just feel like more and more of that is coming, which is a really good sign of, of growth in my opinion. 
So it could also be that those are the folks who are coming to the conference and the ones who are running it themselves find it a little more challenging to be able to get away and uh, to attend. So I think it might be both, Maybe. but I, I yeah. agree. I, I mean, like I look at owners with managers is what I saw. Yeah, there were yeah. definitely a lot more of those. I mean, I think back to like when we first started recording the podcast together and like. I remember I I had no intention of not being at my center. Right. Um, yes. Do you remember? Oh, like yeah. and and Graham it too. It seems now, like forever ago. It does. Um, it, we're coming up on five years, and I really am not there that much when we're short staffed. Um, you know, typically Graham will cover first, and then if we, it's really hard <laughs> whenever he's away now because. I have other responsibilities in the family and just all of our dynamics. And then his band is truly, I mean, he's a professional musician. It's not just show up and play a gig, you know, when you want to, um, <laughs> yeah. there's a ton of work and that's a full-time job for him as well. And he still mm-hmm. teaches music and does all of this other stuff. And so, you know, it is hard for us to be at the center as often as we used to be. And we have an amazing team now that we don't have to be there that often, but you know, we pop in and, and fill in where we can but overall like we're really not there as much you know we're there to help with onboarding our new team members and just sort of checking in and we do team meetings and things but I think a lot of people have kind of reached that as well and if you look back at like the timeline in the float world there were a bunch of us who came in about the same time and we all kind of started like our, our class together yeah. and then we've kind of grown up together and have mm-hmm. all sort of built our teams up and then got yeah. to a place where either we're sending our managers in our place um, you know, Jeremy Jacobs from Float uh, in oh, San Antonio, yeah. he and Courtney mm-hmm. didn't make it this year, but they sent their team instead. And, you know, so I, I do see a lot more of that. So it's something that I think we as the board have to really keep in mind that, you know, our industry is is shifting and evolving a bit. And we're starting to see a lot more managers and not just owners. Yeah. And it should drive the the content a l- little bit differently. Right. Mm-hmm. I think. um You know, certainly I'm sure we're going to get to the Graham and Ashcon talk, but, Mm -hmm. you know, just that conversation, I was thinking about how that was resonating with the people that were there that weren't owners. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm very curious to see how just the the curriculum changes, if you will, if we are seeing more and more, you know, even frontline uh, workers and managers versus just owners. So so very, very cool. Yeah. So can we dive into that conversation oh, or is it too yeah. early? I was going to say, you brought it up. Bit. It's kind of. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, I was like, you guys, I was, okay, I will start. Okay, Dylan, I was kind about... of a hot mess. I was bawling oh. my eyes out and yeah. left shortly thereafter. And <laughs> I was, uh, I was really emotional about the whole thing. Super happy for them. Mm-hmm. And I guess we need to talk about what the talk was about, but uh, yeah, I could barely form sentences after the whole thing was over. Uh, if if I can add to that, um, and Kim, we'll get back to your float. Sorry, uh, the, um, the 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 float on boys at Graham and Ashcon. Um, we got together with the other float center owners around Portland and uh, Lower Washington, and we all got together for drinks and had a great time and snacks and everything, and laughed, had a good time, and that was some news that they they shared with us uh, was. I mean, and you can watch this talk online, um, but uh, that they are changing their business model to a co-op and essentially selling their float center to the their employees, <laughs> which is ridiculous and super cool and, and totally a float on style move, a Graham and Ashcon move, mm-hmm. um, because they don't operate within the lines or just, just because that's what other people have done. They don't think that's what they have to do. They're going to investigate and be creative and... Um, and so, yeah, Sandra and I left and we're like, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. I, I don't know. Um, you know, we had thoughts about it and everything and we talked about it, but it wasn't until the conference when they gave their presentation that it fucking hit home and uh, hit right in the heart and uh, how much they've brought to the industry, how much they, I mean, I think they were, um, I, I don't just think, I think this is like a fact that it's such oh, yeah. a fire for the industry, um, fire for the bonding of all of us mm-hmm. within the industry. I really think they were a glue and they set a precedent for kindness and sharing. Um, yes. And creativity, obviously. Uh, so yeah, for them to be on stage and as I think, um, I can't remember if it was you, Kim or Gloria mentioned, um, but uh you know, no, no shenanigans on stage. It was very straightforward. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't wacky. It was very earnest and um, not somber. But then it hit me as somber afterwards. You know, yeah. where you yeah. even yeah. Yeah. 
truly like it's a success story really sure um so for anybody that didn't see it like Please. make no mistake it was a success story it was a mm -hmm. story of how things evolve and you roll with change and you find the best fit for the circumstances that you're in and uh you know just nothing but real positive but i think mm -hmm. i i just had this emotional connection to Graham and Ashcon in the industry, um, being up there on stage. And, you know, it just hit me in a way that was uh, really deep. And I just have so much gratitude for the two of them. So much gratitude for the whole float on crew, not just the two of them. And they're just like in every part, right? So of course they're not going away. We, most of us have helm and, <laughs> They'll still be involved in that. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it was the sign of a change. Mm -hmm. That's it what really I took was. away. It really was. And they did such a great job of pulling together their why. Of course, they're always amazing on stage. And it was true Graham and Ashcon with their back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, finishing each other's sentences that they do so well. And, um, but it was just such a powerful presentation because it was so stripped down. And normally it is shenanigans. And, you know, crazy stuff. And and yet they still sprinkled in so many little nods to their past yes. talks. Mm. Yes. And there were so many moments where like I was laughing and like mm. taken back to all of the other conversations that they had shared mm. with us in, in years past. And um, and it really was it was a, an emotional it was very helpful information because I remember whenever I first heard that they were going to a co-op and they, you know, wanted to bring this to us. I was like, well, is this beneficial for the industry? And like, you know, we we really have to scrutinize every talk. Uh, that's coming in to see if it's oh, going to be a good fit for the audience and and trying to figure out is there something here for everybody else and you know ultimately it is because there are a lot of folks yeah. who are at different places in their lives they don't want to necessarily be done with the float industry or with their centers but um, to have some creative ideas on how to manage um, you know their center moving forward and what to do with it and they shared really good tangible information the only slide I recall them putting up was actually a list of resources to look into mm -hmm. Um, and it was right. literally just bullets of resources. And um, they shared so much of, of their hearts over the years. And it is really cool to see. I think I agree with you, Gloria. I think we all have just such a personal connection to them. And um, when you think about the float industry, like they're such prominent figures in there that I think that um, thinking of them not being float center owners the way that we've known them to be, um, just that part is like, wait, what? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Sure. But I'm also incredibly, again, with just like you said, Gloria, incredibly grateful for all that they've done for us, and and I'm sure that they'll continue to to find new ways of inspiring the industry, just you know, from a support angle instead of direct ownership. So we we went to the end, but going back to the float center, Dylan, I'm glad you kind of recentered this. So we My started plan was late. Yeah, so we we started with the tour, which um, I ended up. So just real quick, crazy story. I had a meeting in Chicago the day, the Thursday, which was last minute and it was kind of my fault. So I booked a flight from Chicago to Louisville so that I would make it in time for the the tour, the, the float center tour. And the flight was delayed. I'm like, shoot, I'm just going to cancel this flight, jump in the car and go. I mean, I never drove to Louisville so fast. Oh. I stopped for one Burger King, <laughs> worst chicken sandwich I've ever had. Sorry, Burger King. Um, but I was they're, on such a mission to get there. Oh. <laughs> I was on such a mission to get to Louisville and, you know, make it to the tour. So I started at Sakino and I'd been there before, but Kim, I just have to say when I walked in, I felt like home. I felt like I felt like I was given a hug like I, I was from all of you. But I mean, the center <laughs> itself, it was just so welcoming. And um, I, I just I'm so glad that I started there because I could have, you know, I was just trying to see like which one's on the way. Yeah. And so but right before I crossed the border of Kentucky, you know, there you were. But um, yeah, the, the center looks great. The energy was fantastic. The, the um, salt room, the, the salt cave, yeah, unbelievable. The salt cave is so, unbelievable. It is, it is indescribable. I don't think photos will no. tell you how mm -hmm. cozy, beautiful, and intricate it is. It's yeah. Just, it is just unreal. places to hang out. It was just all everybody good, so. was asleep in there. It was so right. funny, like because there were so many people and so much noise and chaos and livelihood, and and it was amazing. Um, but 
yet people fell asleep in there with you know 20 other people that says something. in the room so, that says something <laughs> yeah it was really cool if yeah. anybody's gonna open a salt cave you need to <laughs> see it or get in t- touch with kim like you that needs that is the bar i think that any salt cave should just so vibey for. So vibey. Yeah. It just feels like it's, you're in like a, this cozy clubhouse and mm-hmm. treehouse totally, type of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We we broke all the rules, you know, in the salt cave world. That's hmm. not how salt caves are done. Um, and I just don't like rules. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Common. Yeah. So I didn't get to go to wait lists, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. That was the one stop that I missed. Um, and then I, I, I went to the space too. third stop. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love the yeah. lighting really at Weightless cool. that yeah. is very cool, very cozy. Yeah, both mm-hmm. both centers are beautiful. Somebody did mention um, the cleanliness at Kim. I mean, both places were obviously <laughs> extremely clean, um, equally clean. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, at at uh, at Sukino, somebody was like, "Oh gosh, this place is so clean." And I bet, knowing it's Kim Center, it always is like this. And I was like, "Ah, yeah, that's that's a good point." <laughs> My um, team is awesome, and nice. yes, um, they they do such a great job. And really, like, I want them to have a sense of ownership, and that means, like, mm. you know, if you see something, fix it. If you see something that needs to be cleaned or whatever, just take care of it. It's it's so easy to do, and um, my team does such a great job. And you know, we do have cool. standards and policies, and you know, our little <laughs> checklists for daily tasks and weekly tasks and biweekly and all of that that we all try to stick to and. And we do our, our deep cleans throughout the week because we're open seven days a week. So we, we don't have a day that we just go in and do deep cleans. We we break it up and are doing that, you know, constantly throughout the shift um, every week. So they do a great job with it. I love them. Clearly. Shout out to Roy and Ben. Beautiful flow center. And then the third center was which, what was the name of it again? They have a really long name, but around here we just know them as Blissful. Um, Blissful Blissful. Relaxation Float and Wellness Center, something with Louisville as well. I'm sorry, guys, I'm butchering (laughs) your name. Um, (laughs) It's listed differently on their website and on their social media and everything, but Blissful Relaxation is, yeah, a a really cool place too. And um, gorgeous, huge cabins. Um, yeah, we got to float with them right before we opened. They invited us over to go uh, float because we kept getting delayed, and um, which is a really, really cool place too. Yeah, shout out to them. I got to do a photo shoot out of there with yeah. uh, float center owner Cat, which was super cool. And I guess uh, teaser that'll be the next uh, Patreon release. So be sure Woo-hoo! to sign up before the. Uh, oh gosh, this will come out after. But hey, now uh, send me an email if you just <laughs> have to get those. Uh, message me, and uh, actually that's. A, True thing. If you ever sign up late for Patreon, if you message on Patreon, um, I can just PayPal you, invoice you for the last set and send them to you right away at whatever tier you would like. So just as an FYI. But anyways, got to shoot in that. Those giant cabins was crazy, crazy cool. So got some really creative lighting in there. And they have these, I think, $5,000, maybe it was three, three to five thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars studio, like recording studio doors. So these mm-hmm. like it's like Yes, I noticed those. A bank safe. It's crazy. So was it a bank before? No, they purchased um they purchased uh movie theater quality doors because if you think about when you go to a movie theater, you don't hear the movies next to you. Um they purchased some I mean crazy expensive doors to Yeah, I noticed they were they were Mm -hmm. so unusual right so yeah. i i took a mental note of that but oh it, yes. very interesting okay so you yes. got so did you do any other photography outside of float no no nope. okay yeah. okay yeah i couldn't remember what else that they had but uh mm-hmm. yeah the tour was was awesome even though i got two-thirds of it and um i didn't get to ride the bus but i jumped on the bus mm-hmm. and took a selfie i put posted that <laughs> in the collective that was a, a great uh a great vibe in there those yeah. were nice buses, Kim. They're really Dude, nice buses. They were cool. stretch limo buses. And yeah. Is that what they were? Got it. Yes. I'm pretty sure there was a stripper pole in those buses. I don't know if anybody used I'm, them, but... I'm still sore. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to show off my moves. So I was Whatever. like, wow. Oh, there so. you go. I wasn't going to say it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I asked them not to post those photos in particular, but yeah. Um, yeah, that so, was interesting to see a poll. On the <laughs> so just a couple of other things that Please. I wanted to cover before and I missed the, the last day, really. Sure. So I'm hoping you guys can talk about Sunday a little bit. But uh, 
Flynn Perry, mm -hmm. um, his talk was, you know, as usual, I'm like hanging on every word and the way he speaks, he just, you know, he's just really a marvel. Um, so it's just so wonderful to see that he made it out. And uh, mm -hmm. that was just something that, um, you know, it's truly a gift to have him still connected yes. to the industry and know that he's still tinkering and working on yes. the tank. He has a deposit from Float60, FYI. Um, <laughs> so... Of course. Well, I'm, I'm very excited to, because, you know, we still have a Samadhi. So mm -hmm. I'm very connected to Glenn in that regard because Chicago, you know, grew up on those Samadhi tanks. So that, that was a really special talk for me. Which ones yeah. stood out to you? Yeah. Well, I will go, I mean, there are a few, but I'll go with the Indigo Floats story. Uh, yeah. Holy balls. And that's one, I mean, they've even been on the show talking about it. Yeah, so like, yeah. There, there weren't, weren't a whole lot of surprises, but them being on stage and you just it really clicking how much they went through and how driven they are to provide floating yeah. for their community. Um, it just, for them to be it, able to stand up there and talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, wow. and like what a sweet couple too. I like, I love that I on love stage them. too. Um, yeah. how they, how they were with each other. Um, uh, was awesome. And then, um, so they like totally had me emotionally primed and like, uh, and then at the very end of the speech, Glenn came, you know, they share, shared their, their favorite photo, which was them at a previous float conference with, with Glenn there. And then Glenn starts walking up on stage. And that's when I was just like, waterworks. I just like, oh my <laughs> God, are you kidding me? So beautiful. Um, it's pretty incredible. And, and yes, it's just our industry. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. not to bounce around again, but definitely heard that from people outside the industry mm -hmm. who were there at the conference of like, Conf conferences are not like this. This is not normal. <laughs> right. It really shouldn't even be called a conference. Right. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. Kim, yeah. highlight talk for you. Oh, geez. So if I'm being honest, I often miss a lot of them. Mm, um, yeah. And so I kind of pop in and out as much as I can in between things, you know, and especially if I'm facilitating something. Um, but I, you know, I, I always enjoy hearing whatever Justin Feinstein has to say. You know, he has... He did a very last minute change this year um, right. and had planned on talking about, you know, the future of floating. And in fact, that was still in our, our program and on our agenda. And then uh, literally days before, um, <clears throat> Justin almost didn't make it to the conference. Yeah. And so uh, with Maui being on fire, he, you know, we were keeping in touch with him throughout the whole uh, experience and in, in the week or two leading up to the conference. And, and there were moments that we really weren't sure. We knew that he wanted to be there and uh, I'm thankful that he was able to. But um, I think it was just a really cool moment to see him kind of pivot where we've we've been working so hard for the Float Research Collective and uh, trying to do fundraising efforts. And we were all excited to launch this new project, Project Arcturus, which technically we still sort of launched. Um, if you went to the table, you got to hear a little bit more mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but to, to hear about how he wants to help the people of Maui and how other manufacturers are coming together to help support that vision, you know, and, and, um, if you <clears throat> weren't there, basically what, uh, Justin is trying to do is have these, uh, modular float units that have like four units in a shipping, uh, cargo crate thing, um, container and to be able to provide floats ongoing for free to everybody in Maui. And so he came up with uh, all of the, the numbers. Brad uh, Doak pulled together all of the estimates on how much it's going to cost. And then basically we're going to do a little fundraising effort to make that happen and to get those shipping containers for floating uh, delivered to Maui as quickly as possible. And, um, and that way, because the mental health um, aspect of, of losing almost an entire island is just tremendous. And this could set a model for other future, you know, emergency situations and, and tragic uh, occurrences that happen that we could bring floating to help people in the moment that they need it the most. Um, I think that's just, that's, it's so inspiring. And that, that alone just tells you the heart of the industry is we know yeah. floating can help people in so many different ways and so many different reasons. And um, to be able to hopefully help with that mission is, is really cool. You know, one of the things mm -hmm. um, I think Justin shared on social media is that the number one thing requested, it, it's not clothes that, you know, they actually stopped taking clothes because so many mm -hmm. were donated. Um, it's uh, mental health support is mm -hmm. one of the most needed things they need on the island. And so um, floating 
PTSD, um, where PTSD, I think you said from the speech, sets in around six months uh, mm -hmm. to a year. Um, if, if those can get out there and people can start decompressing and getting back to a, a normal body state and, and mental state, um, that could be extremely beneficial. So um, yeah, that was a yeah. very interesting pivot. And yeah, I, I assumed he wasn't going to make it. Uh, we texted a few times and he said, his family said, go, go, go do yeah. this. And yeah. I'm really happy he made it out. Mm -hmm. um, if, if only for that presentation and, and exactly. uh, sharing that with the community. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of Project Arcturus, I, I will just uh, shoehorn this in real quick, which um, is, I, and you know, we'll get Justin on to talk about this real soon, but uh, I'm just really excited that like, this is probably the most passionate I am about anything float research related. And, um, and with the FRC is the idea of 100 float centers. We're trying to get 100 float centers to sign up to donate $100 a month and if you do that, you're going to be in the first group of people who will, and, and that, that money will go directly towards fundraising for this network of research. And so um, you will be part of that initial uh, group of float centers that will collect data from your community, and all that um, data will be public. It, it, it's HIPAA, you know, so it's not like the names of your floaters, but all the research data will be public um, and can be combed through all sorts of different ways and we're going to glean just a ton of information from that just a huge crowdsourcing uh, bit of information and um and then that will expand out to other float centers beyond that but to be in that first group um, mm -hmm. i'm really excited to be part of that and i it's, want everybody yeah. to be part of it. like this this is it for me like there are other cool research projects that i totally believe in but everybody being able to participate in this gathering of data is absolutely what moves me so it's, please it's sign up please, we're, we're, uh, yeah go ahead sorry go ahead finish what you're saying there find follow uh, float research collective on social media find the links and um i can't think of the donation link at the moment i'll put it on the sh the web page of, of ours here the show page um but uh yeah sign up message me whatever if you can't find it um we'll, we'll get you set up super stoked yeah. it's something that justin's been talking about at float conferences for years to the mm. point that we're all like, yeah, 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 we got it. We know this is what we want to do. Can we just do it? And right. here we are, we're doing it. Um, that, you know, having the ability for our everyday people to contribute to research in a way that's going to be recognized as actual research because right. it's anonymous yes. protected data. That's the key. And, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's and anecdotal. this will be the largest float study ever because we're all pitching in and think about how many people we have coming to float with us every day. And it's just amazing to see that like we're finally here. So the money that is being donated, like Dylan said, is actually covering the cost to build this network there or, or to purchase if there's, um, you know, they're looking to see if there's a system that's already out there in place that would work or if we need to develop our own and the funds are going to cover those costs um, of, of being able to create this network and it will happen you know, pretty quickly once we, we get the funding, it'll be implemented very, very quickly after that. And then beyond that, there are other goals for Float Research Collective. And, you know, we've uh, we've been working with Justin, and, and I say we because Dylan and I are both on the board um, for the FRC and, you know, working on outlining what goals are specifically. We know we have all of these big picture ideas, um, and now we're working on putting together a timeline that this is the first goal, and this is how much this goal is going to cost. And then once we meet that, we're going to raise this much money, and this is where that money is going to go. And so we're working on getting all of that information out to everybody as well so that you can see exactly where those dollars are going. But sign up for a $100 recurring donation. It's so easy. If you think about it, it's just barely over a float a month that you're giving to the FRC and can have a huge, huge impact. So, and of course you can also still do other fundraisers and, and efforts and things too. And we'll talk about all of those another day. Plus you get to tell your float community about it, like your, your clients and everything, which I think is just pretty stinking cool. I think they're going to be really excited about it as well. And yes. just a little bit of, um, I guess, marketing, I guess you could, you could put mm -hmm. it that way, you know, putting that in your newsletter, you know, it doesn't make your float center look too shabby when you're contributing to the Float Research Collective in that way. And they're going to be excited to be able to share their data and their benefits with the community. So, yes. Wow. That was more than just a shoehorn. That was a full segment there, wasn't it? My goodness. <laughs> um, let's see here. I, gosh, there was I've got a question. Oh, please. please. Yeah. Jumping to Sunday. I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. I want to learn about Michaela. <laughs> 
I want to know what the float story was all about. Yes, she's so sweet. So Michaela is my daughter. She is 14 and she was one of our float stories on Sunday. So she was able to hop up on the stage and um, just do a very, very quick short story about how she floats. Um, you know, she loves to float because she she's a super bright kid. She puts a lot of pressure on herself and um, she gets really stressed out with school sometimes. And I don't know where she gets this from, but she likes to do a lot of different things and is involved <laughs> in a lot of different clubs mm-hmm. and um, organizations and sometimes stretches herself a little thin. So floating helps her to, to come back and uh, de-stress. Um, she talked about, you know, uh, she was so cute. She got a little nervous and she was talking about asthma and she's forgetting that that was the salt cave side of things. Um, but floating also helps her again, like reducing stress and hopefully um, also reducing her asthma attacks. Hers can be pretty severe and pretty scary when they hit. So, and we've noticed that she has more of those when she's super stressed. So floating helps her to kind of uh, prevent that from happening. And she shared a little bit about being able to work at the center. You know, she's 14. She doesn't run the place by herself by any stretch, but she goes in on busier days and uh, helps us with some back of the house stuff. And it's a really fascinating thing that uh, she loves to talk to people. And when our guests come in, uh, a very, very interesting ha- thing happens. All of a sudden, the, the tip jar is way fuller at the end of the day <laughs> than when she's not there. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's That's very good. interesting. And um, my team has noticed it. And they're like, you know, I mean, if <laughs> Michaela wants to come in today. Um <laughs> Well, you must have been a very proud mama. Yes. Congratulations on that. Like, thank you. All of the stuff, right? You've got the Mm -hmm. successful float center and the conference went off without a hitch. But that is a moment when your Mm -hmm. child can go up on stage and speak in front of everyone. That's got to be one of the most satisfying. So as a mom, I wanted to Mm -hmm. give you a kudos there because that's beautiful. Congratulations. I may have not been able to contain myself and ran out on stage when she was finished to give her a hug. (laughs) (laughs) I was curious how she was going to receive that. Was it going to be like, oh, mom, come on. Or no, she totally seemed to seem right into it. She's super awesome. awesome. And here's the really cool thing is she was backstage talking to Stephen Johnson and talking to, um, there's a woman named Chelsea who was our AV tech from the venue. And Chelsea was amazing. And Stephen kept asking her, like, if she's nervous. And she's like, Shh, I got this. I, I live for the stage, which is true. She's an actress. And um, part of what she loved about being up there is knowing that, like, Broadway performs on that stage. Oh, cool. And cool. so she, it was, like, a really cool moment for her, too. Awesome. Um, but she was so confident about it. And she was chatting with Chelsea, the AV tech, who now said that, you know, we can uh, contact her. And she's going to give Michaela a tour backstage of the entire facility, including Whitney Hall, which we didn't get to see as part of the Mm -hmm. conference, but Whitney Hall is where most of the performances for Broadway are. And, you know, we're subscribers, so we're there a lot. And we get to go uh, take Michaela and get to see everything um, behind behind the scenes. So she's really excited for that. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So can I just say, um, and and Gloria, I know you've been asking about Sunday, and we'll get to that in just a moment. I think this will kind of even segue to it a bit, but... I um, suffer from some social anxiety. Like, I like small groups, two people on Zoom. This is great for me. Um, But uh, large groups in person, I really... um, Honestly, I was just losing sleep before the conference only because of that. And it it really hits me hard. And this conference was so cozy and comfortable for me. Kim, I'd love for you to talk about why that was. But I felt comfortable introducing myself to strange like you know somebody was by themselves I was like hey how's it going you know where are you from blah 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 I felt really good about that I felt great about you know and and this is all my own junky psychology here but like there are there are cool kids there are people who like I'm like what would they want to do with me have anything to do with me like I had these dumb conversations in my head and this year it was like I I was chatting with them having a great time we were laughing we're sharing float stories all that stuff and I was like what why is this so different this year um kim what'd you do i sprinkled magic everywhere that's oh, all oh it was a magic <laughs> pixie dust yes yeah, didn't know that um, was legal in kentucky I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know you know i mean i felt that too i think the conference was definitely smaller um last year i think we had about 220 people this year had about 200 
And mm-hmm. so I think having a smaller conference definitely helps make it feel more intimate. I think our space was really cool because mm. we kept everybody kind of in the same area. And so even yeah. if you were going between main stage and the talks and workshops that were happening in the scene, um, you know, it was really close. Um, but I don't know. I, I, something really did just feel different, too, this year. And uh, I, I felt it, too. Normally, like, I'm I'm with you. I get very anxious. I'm a, a major introvert. And, um, you know, combining anxiety and introversion often end up with me, like, in a lot of angst at the end of the day or even at the beginning of the day. And I don't sleep a lot. And I didn't sleep the first night of the conference. Oh, wow. uh, but after that, I did. And it just felt really good to be there. And I think a lot of us were kind of soaking in every moment that we could and not wanting the night to yeah, end just because totally. it was the conversations were so great, you know. And um, I, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really felt that, too. Gloria, what do you what do you think? Well, I am not an introvert. I don't know if any of you have noticed that, but um, I didn't have anxiety leading up. I had excitement. You know, I feed on the energy, but I am also somebody that's in bed by 10 o'clock. So I think I miss out on some of those additional conversations. Like I, I'm very much boundary driven when it comes to my sleep and my rest. And, you know, so I, I thought it was incredible Um, all the interactions as always every year, I did feel like it was much more intimate because of the way the space was laid out. I really like that when, Mm -hmm. you know, it's more concentrated and we don't feel like we're spread out and you don't know where to be. I did not feel that at all this year. Um, But yeah, I mean, I was in bed by 10, so Mm -hmm. I'm boring. I am that (laughs) old lady. I might be the oldest person at the conference. I don't know. But, um, (laughs) but I, I, I was in bed by midnight Pacific time every night. So that was (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so it was 10 Eastern. mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. normally I'm very protective of my sleep too, but float conference, like, you know, all holds bar. (laughs) What's that saying? Whatever it is. The rules don't apply at float con. Yes, no holds bar. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, but I loved it. I thought it was was great. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I know that... um, you know, normally I would look forward to the end of the conference to understand where the next conference is going to mm. be. So I know that yeah. there were logistics where you couldn't share that. So I don't know if you want to talk about that mm-hmm. before we wrap up, because I know yeah. people are excited. So at, at the We started this really fun tradition a couple of years ago um, where we announced where the next city is going to be. And we just started that in 2021, I think it was. Um, and when we announced that we were actually, when we announced that we were going to Portland, Maine, we had not done our due diligence yet. And we were shocked by this, the price of everything. And we decided, you know what, before we announce, we're going to make sure that we have a facility in mind that we have, yeah. we know how much hotels are going to cost. Yeah, we feel good to. about the financial commitment. And so we did that the next year when we were able to announce that we were coming here, um, we'd already kind of scouted out several different venue options. We knew that we could afford it. And this year, you know, we had some last minute changes. We had to make some budget cuts on things. And uh, literally those were happening days before the conference. And it just took up a little bit of our extra time where normally we would be spending some of that time contacting other venues in the next possible city. And we did a lot of that actually this year. Uh, We had looked for a bunch of cities. We had a couple of, of cities that were, you know, strong contenders that we thought would be really wonderful. We weren't able to find venues that were within our budget and that our people could afford if we were traveling. And we're trying to be really, really cost conscious Mm. for everyone. Um, We know that, you know, our ticket price has had to go up. Our venue costs have gone up. Our everything has gone up. Um, If you've never planned a conference before, (laughs) I'm happy to sit down. And (laughs) I know I'm happy to sit down. All of our financials are public records. You know, we'll be publishing everything soon. But um, it's very, very expensive, and we we have a lot of unique uh, characteristics for our event. We need a space that feels intimate, that's really interesting because nobody likes convention centers. Um, mm-hmm. We need a place that is, you know, not just your square box. Um, we tried like crazy to get food trucks, and that's something that we look at because everybody loves those, and it was going to cost an astronomical amount to get food trucks at the venue, so we just did those for the parties. 
And so we're looking at all of these different elements as we're trying to plan. And this year, you know, we just weren't able to nail down a specific location that we could afford. Um, that doesn't mean we're not having a conference. It just means we couldn't announce it at the conference. And all so right, I let's try hear to convey that on stage. Kim. Let's hear so, it. <laughs> so next year's conference is going to be somewhere, and we're going to have a great time. <laughs> um, yeah. We still don't know. Yeah, we still don't know. But um, we are. We needed to take a few days off and rest and recover, and then we're going to jump right back into it and try to figure out next year. We've got some creative ideas, too, because some people are saying, well, maybe, you know, I don't want to go to the conference every year or hmm. – what if we did something that was more of a retreat style? Mm-hmm. Um, so we're considering other op- you know, other options beyond just a standard conference, too. And so um, there are a lot of different ways that it could pot- potentially go. We've also talked to other nonprofits, and I don't think it's a, a huge secret to anybody at this point, but we are considering. It is not done. It is not approved, but we are considering a merger with the, S- uh, the, the Float Tank Association. Um, so we're exploring a lot of possibilities. And that just takes us a little bit more time to get there. So as soon as we have information for everybody, we'll share it. And I, totally understood. I'm no longer on the board as of this year, but I want to make sure, you know, as an outsider who's no longer in a board seat, that people do take the time to go out and understand the complexity that it takes to put this thing together. It's a lot. And you mentioned that the financials on the website, um, so floatconference.com, if you go to the about section, there's a couple of categories. You could look at the bylaws, you could look at the procedures, you could look at the minutes. Um, and most importantly, you can look at the financing, the finances from years past. And this year's will be published soon, I'm sure. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's enlightening to actually go, you know, as business owners, we often hear, oh, you know, it's so expensive from customers, Right. But when you really break down what we do and we have rent and insurance and all the things like take the time to go out and understand it and educate yourself, because I think it just gives you a different lens. When you go to the float conference, it gives you like a different level of appreciation and understanding. Uh, You know, I just thought I wanted to say that as an outsider from the board, because I know how much work you guys put in and it's a lot. So thank you for all that you've been doing. Thank you for continuing to try to make it better every year and doing all the things, but it's a lot. So a lot. that's my two cents. Yeah. Thanks. And Brandon, the board is I don't volunteers. Know. Yeah. The board is nice. volunteers. Jocelyn yeah. is a paid employee, a paid staff member. Um, and then we hire Alicia during the event or um, if Alicia's ever yeah. not able to do that, you know, we're, we'll, we'll hire someone else. Hopefully she sticks with us because she's really good and she she mm-hmm. knows what to do um, and is just really awesome at it. Um, but otherwise, you know, we're all volunteers doing this. And so sometimes that means that we just need a little bit more grace. Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing on the website, because I just pulled it up after I ranted, um, I love the little infographics that we have. Yeah. So if you don't want to do the real deep homework and read all of the reports, just go take a look at the 2022 and the 21, 21 annual report infographics. Really cool. Whoever did that. Um, nice. Yeah. Jocelyn so Grace. shout nice out. I, had two I, I think this is great. <laughs> it's great. You know, it talks about the attendance and, you know, again, if you're thinking about how things have evolved and changed since COVID, I mean, Oh my gosh. It's it's it just really makes it obvious when you look at it in a graphical form. It's so. really wild since I stepped in because I mean the conferences were getting huge there for a while mm-hmm. and you know we're talking like 8 or 900 people and then covid happened and yeah. I step in and we're trying to plan a conference that we know 8 or 900 people might come to but oh wait the numbers are way lower. And yeah. we have no idea. It's such a wild card. And, you know, so one of the Crazy. things that we may have to do next year is actually set a limit and say this is the, the maximum number of attendees we can have. And if we sell out, we sell out. And I think that's what we may end up having to do just because trying to plan for the maybe such a huge gap yeah. um, and to find a venue that can accommodate and won't feel awful if it's 200, but can accommodate 500 yeah. or 600. Like, totally. it's so hard to do that. So we might yeah. change some of that structure, too. Wow. Wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, can we, yeah. can I, I hate to put you on the spot, but I, can I ask for an exclusive announcement uh, on the podcast? <laughs> can we get Kim <laughs> Hannon and Jocelyn on to 
Talk about location and hosts and all that. We might be able to do that. All right. We'll we'll talk behind the scenes. All right. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I know know we're closing it out, but... um, Oh, good. Good. Who, who, who... (laughs) Um, it it wouldn't be an auto photo episode. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I needed to drop. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, is it time? I okay. knew, yeah, so, I needed to drop. Um, okay, okay. We got a heart out. I um, want to give a special shout out to Jocelyn for all the work that she put on, not only um, before the conference, but during the conference. Uh, what, what were people calling her? Like a pit bull or something like that? A little bo- the sorry, tiny, general. tiny general. Tiny general. Thank you. Tiny general. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So appropriate. Making shit happen. Um, yes. and, uh, Kim, oh my gosh, <laughs> <sighs> such a big thank you, uh, t- to Kim, uh, for everything that she does and did for the float conference and continues to do. Um, I, 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 I can't say thank you enough for what you did and just your presence there was amazing. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Thanks for being my friend. And Graham and Graham. Oh yeah. 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 Rockstar Graham. Yeah. 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 Rockstar And Graham. the city of Louisville and the city of Louisville. Okay. We're backing it out. Yep. 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 Um, <laughs> and, and big thanks to Greg and Chelsea uh, as well from waitlist. Awesome. Thank you guys for hosting. That was super cool. Um, and uh, yeah. Anything else guys? I'm Kim, thankful thank to you. everybody who was there and just yeah. awesome people. Mm-hmm. And it's so inspiring to be together. It really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It really is. There's nothing like the in person. I mean, even these conversations are so cool and I love them, but there's nothing mm-hmm. like in person. Gloria. And um, t- last but not least, mm. Bram and Ashcon. Congratulations <laughs> on the transition. <laughs> yes. We love you guys so much. I hope you felt it in my hugs after your your speech. It was just uh mm-hmm. really just a uh, inspiration, truly. So thank you guys. Agreed. Yeah. <sighs> All right, guys. Um, <laughs> thank you, Kim. Thank you, Gloria. Thanks for being here today and, and discussing all the stuff. I feel like we could have done another hour, to be honest. And we miss you, Drew. Yeah. And we miss you, Drew. Congrats, Drew. We're very happy for you. <laughs> 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 um, let's see here. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, of course. Thanks to the FTA. Thanks to Helmbot. And... Um, Thanks to Mindful Solutions, mindful2ls.solutions. That's Kim's, uh, one of Kim's other projects uh, uh, that can do so much for you. Stay tuned. Um, be sure to follow her, uh, to, to follow Mindful Solutions on social media. Not only can she help you with your social media, which as I'm sure you're aware if you own a business already is a ton of work and entire other job. Um, so she can help you with that, but there's a whole lot more she can do and more incoming too. So be sure to subscribe so you can stay tuned for that stuff. And gosh, is that it? Um, thanks to you for listening. They, oh, a Patreon. I should probably mention that stuff too. Um, if you want uh, float photography and uh, video, um, go to patreon.com forward slash art of the float. You can also go to shop.art of the float if you want to um, buy a la carte video clips and images, uh, testimonial videos, blog posts, stuff like that. And then. Um, and we do a bunch of different things. You can also go to theartofthefloat.com and it'll just kind of take you to a hub that takes you to all that stuff. And yeah, thanks for listening. Really appreciate you guys. <laughs> Don't want it to end. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just like the float. And one more just thing. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. And one more thing. Um, until uh, <laughs> I messed it up. As always, thank you guys for being part of this community and making it so damn special. Love all of you. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>